Hello, Facebook. What's good? What's good? So, um, tonight I was not planning on, I was not planning on, um, doing a Bible study, but it's going to be real quick. Um, I just felt led to come on here. Um, I'm going to turn this camera around. Actually, um, as you can see, I was in here uh, reading my Bible and the Lord um, gave me some scriptures that really stuck out to me. And I just really love this Bible because it has side notes with where you can um, where you can take notes as you read. So um, that's when I was in here reading and studying while Carly is asleep. And so I just felt a lid to come on here. So um, I just want to share some scriptures with you that um, that uh, the Lord was speaking to me through this scripture. So I'm in Jeremiah and um it's a really good book. If you have not read or studied the book of Jeremiah, you should. Um like lately for the past few nights or whatever, I hadn't been able to sleep during different times of the night. And a lot of times that's when God will try to that's when God will, will try to speak to you um during different times of the hours when you can't sleep so if you ever experience that that's a good time for you to um to pray or to read your word during times when you can't sleep because there's often times when the lord be trying to speak to you or when he try to show you things when you can't sleep so i was just reading and some scriptures i ain't gonna be on here long but some scriptures really stuck out to me and um i'm in jeremiah but i was in um chapter 15 and um verse 7 stuck out to me and he said i will destroy my people since they did not repent from their ways so um it's a lot of sin going on that um god is not pleased with in the world and um it's sad to say, but this is just a generation that refuses to repent. And I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking about everybody, but I'm talking about the masses. People just, they will not repent. Just like the generation of Noah, just like the generation of Sodom and Gomorrah. They just refuse to repent. And when the flood came, as in the days of Noah, they was washed away and everybody was um, destroyed in the flood itself for Noah and his family, which it was only eight people. It talks about that in Matthew chapter 24. But anyway, I'm going to say that again. He said, I will destroy my people since they did not repent from their ways. And that just really stuck out to me because it just made me think about COVID. If you just look around and you just see all of these people that's dying and that's leaving here, even before COVID hit us, okay, even before it hit us, just think about like back in the day, you know, the old way out live the young, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, no, I'm sorry, the young way out live the old, but it's like now in today's society, you got the young people dropping like flies. It ain't even the old people that's dying. It's 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 the young people that's leaving here. And I don't know about you, but that that should make people, you know, reevaluate themselves and reevaluate their life and be like, man, I really need to get this together. I cause cause you, tomorrow is not promised to none of us. It's not promised to me. It's not promised to you. It's not promised to none of us. And we don't know. When our punch card is going to be you. I'm just saying. Like we just don't know. But I just see so much death. And I just see these people just leaving here. And like I said. Most of the time. It don't even be the old people. It be the young people. Prime example. My son grandmother. My son grandmother. She. I want to say 96. And she had COVID. And that lady still here. She's still ill, but just look around and look at all these folks that's just leaving her and is just dying just due to COVID. I mean, it's it's bananas to me, but these people will not repent. They will not turn away from their wicked ways, but there is an urgency for repentance. And 
I'm not saying that, you know, that, that God played us with COVID, but what I am saying is he have allowed it to happen, to take place. And I believe that it's due to a lack of repentance because, you know, the Bible tells us if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and will seek my face and will turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from them in heaven and I will heal their land, but people will not repent. So, you know, like he says, he said, I will destroy my people since they did not repent from their ways. And that came from Jeremiah chapter 15, verse um, 7. And I want to say this. I don't know what people think. I think people think that the Bible got some type of expiration date on it or something. Let me tell you something. The word of God say, heaven and earth will pass away. But he said, my word will never pass away. So I don't care if this book was written 25,000 years ago. He said, my words will never pass away. There is no expiration date on this. So even though it was written, whenever it was written, it don't matter. The words don't expire. This is an actual living word. The commandments. They won't expire. They don't have an expiration date. You know what I'm saying? This holy book, it don't have an expiration date. It's an actual living word. But I just wanted to say that. And some more, uh, a couple more verses stuck out to me while I was just reading before I got on here. Because this was not even in my plans. But I just feel led to come on here and um, share this scripture real quick. Um, What else was I reading here? Also, um, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and, and whose hope is in the Lord. So, that one really stuck out to me because it's like, it's just disturbing. Because it's like people put in their trust in a vaccine. They put in their trust in man. They put in their trust in a vaccine instead of putting their trust in God. You know what I'm saying? To heal the land. And to heal us from, from COVID and from this pandemic. And it's like people got more faith in, in a vaccine. They got more faith in a vaccine that won't even know nothing about that I don't trust than they do in God. And it's crazy. It's just like, I don't get it. It's, it's, it's cra that, that goes to show you how messed up this world is. That goes to show you. How messed up this society is that people trust, they got more trust and hope in the vaccine and man and doctors and nurses than they got more trace, than they have more trust and faith in God. I'm just saying that, and I mean, chapter 17, verse 7 said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. So chapter 17 verse 9 says the heart is more deceitful than all things and desperately wicked. Who can understand it? He said in verse 10, I the Lord search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his deeds. So he said, I, the Lord, I search hearts and I search minds. That's what he said. And I know that to be true because when you feel conviction from the Holy Spirit, that means it's something that's in you that's not right that you need to fix. Something that's in you that's not pleasing to God and you need to correct it because that's how I feel when I feel conviction. And he really does search your heart and he searches your minds. And I'll tell you this. People may, you know, think I'm holier than thou or, but the spirit of God is, is real. The Holy Spirit is a real spirit. It's, it's the actual living spirit of God that is in you. And he really does search your heart and, and search your minds. I'm telling you what I know. I've been in my room a couple of times and sitting in my bed and I was did on two, on two different occasions. And it's these two um, women of God that I watch all the time. And one particular day, I was dealing with a situation. I kid y'all not. This wasn't that long ago. This was a month or two ago. If that. I was dealing with a situation. And the woman, 
said it's somebody on here watching i was on youtube who is and she named it down to the t what i was dealing with i kid you not i'm talking about it wasn't it, you can't tell me that the holy spirit ain't real because it was in no other way for her to know exactly the situation that i was dealing with it was it, it was in no way and i was like like i know this guy i know or whatever not to say that not to say that i was the only one battling with this situation but i was dealing with that situation so i know that, she, that i was one of the people who she was talking to I'm, i could have been the only one she was talking to but it was another woman that i watched all the time and the exact thing happened and i had been dealing with some warfare and battling some stuff in my mind that was like making me like talk crazy to the holy spirit and different stuff it was just like like i was just battling all type of warfare in my head and this woman like she knew that she she said what i was dealing with she was like it's somebody on here who is like the like the enemy trying to get you to curse god or curse the holy spirit or or those was the exact words that she was used that she used and that is what i was dealing with and I had to keep praying, like, Lord, bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. You know, I'm paraphrasing. That's a verse. But I was like, I didn't tell nobody this. So how how would she have known that this lady don't know me? Like, that's how powerful the Holy Spirit is. That's how powerful God is. Like, he really searches hearts and he really searches minds. It's a real thing. But I just wanted to share them scriptures, and I I got another scripture that I wanted to share. So I he led me to um Jeremiah chapter eighteen, and I'm in verse um verse eight. So in verse eight, he says, <clears throat> "If that nation against which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster." that i thought to do to it or at another moment i may speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plan it if he says in verse 10 if it does evil in my sight by not obeying my voice then i will relent of the good with which i said i would bless it Okay, so going down to verse 11. Now, therefore, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am shaping disaster against you and devising a plan, de devising a plan against you. Repent now, everyone, from his evil way and make your ways and your deeds good. But they say there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices and each of us will do according to the stubbornness of his evil heart. So basically, I mean, God is saying, repent now, all of you, not y'all, but people in general of your evil ways and I will, and I will make your ways and your deeds good but he said that they said but they say there is no hope so we're gonna walk after our own devices okay and each of us will do according to the stubbornness of our evil hearts i mean that just really stuck out to me because i'm like if that ain't what we're dealing with in 2021 and you know the thing is this like i just see so much going on like I don't even watch TV for real. I don't even know why I be paying this high cable bill. Because I don't even watch TV. All I watch is YouTube and documentaries and study this word. That's what I do. And it's like, I just be looking at people like, how, how can you live in this world and, and, and completely be oblivious to the things that's going on in this world? And, it, and it's so disturbing to me because it's like people really don't care. They really don't have a clue what's going on. 
And it's just really quite sad because it's like people falling by the wayside every day. People are perishing. The Bible clearly says in Hosea 4 and 6, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Okay, so it, it's, it's just baffling to me how people can just like live in this bubble. And it's like people just secretly wishing and hoping that, that our lives are going to return back to normal the way that they were in 2019. And I'm here to tell you that that is not true. You know why? Because people are not humbling themselves and turning away from their wicked ways. And I see it all the time. And I'm not judging. It's just I know what I know because I, I study. Like I study this is what I do every day. Like God has made a way for me to be at home with my kids and not work. I haven't worked in eight months. So when a lot of people, it's not to throw shade, but you know, if I'm going to evangelize or be a pastor or minister, I ain't really into titles and all that type of stuff. But if this is going to be my profession, this is my calling. I know this is, this is my purpose according to God's plan and will for my life. Then I got to study it and I got to understand it. But it's like, this is what I do. I study it every day. You know, the, the, the God, the word tells us to meditate on the law day and night. And I just see it and I just look and I just be like, these people are really lost. It's like the blind, the blind just leading the blind. And, and these people, they own a path of, of destruction. They, they headed towards that, that broad path of destruction because people don't like the word hell, but, I mean, it is what it is. And that's another thing that I wanted to say, too. You know, it's people that have a problem with some of the things that I teach or that I preach. But that's the problem in today's society because, yes, God is long-suffering. Yes, God is loving. Yes, he is patient. But he also has another side. He is a just God and God hates sin. He despises sin. He will not tolerate sin. That's why I urge people to come to repentance because we are in the last days and a lot of people really don't, they don't want to hear it. They they don't want to see it. They turn a blind eye to it. They just act like they, like they don't see the signs. I mean, you got to be blind not to see things that's, that's going to that's going on that's taking place i just i just be looking like lord please help these people help your children just wake them up but he just i don't know people just they would not repent you know and so he will it says in the word that he will send you a strong delusion if you don't have a love for the truth and people don't want to hear the truth they they just don't want to hear it they dismiss it they don't want to hear it they you know people here's the thing about a lot of some of these mega pastors okay like joel olstein and some of these big time pastors they only teach what people want to hear they only teach feel good sermons they only teach motivational speeches. And that's so dangerous because what that does is it, it, it leads people astray. It leads the sheep astray and it leads them to a path of destruction. My thing about Joel Olsen, and he's not the only one, it's several, but I'm just using him because he's well known and he's well liked. You know why? Because he teaches what people want to hear and the bible talks about that in the last days that people will not hear sound doctrine but instead they will want to hear um they will want their ears to be tickled or their ears to be um something like that you get where I'm going. It, 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 it says that in the Bible. I mean, every day prophecy is being fulfilled. It talks in the Bible where they talk, where, um, in a verse where, um, it talks about, um, the signs of the end times. And it talks about when you start hearing about peace. Okay, did you know that um that Donald Trump signed a peace agreement or some type of peace treatment uh treaty or or whatever he signed uh a couple years ago? You can you can Google it. 
about making peace with Israel. I mean, prophecy is being fulfilled every day. It also talks about the building of the third temple in the Bible. Did you know that they're already building the temple in Jerusalem right now as we speak? I mean, it's 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 crazy because prophecy being fulfilled every day, but people don't see it. They they turn they 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 close their eyes to it. It's being fulfilled every day. I don't get on here because I be bored and I ain't got nothing to do. The devil is a lie. I got a whole baby here, like two two children. I could be cleaning, cooking, whatever, whatever it is that I do. But I, I, this is my calling. I enjoy what I do. It ain't always easy because a lot of times I be like, man, I want to throw in the towel. I know I'm saved. I know where I'm going, but I can't do that because I know I got to preach the word of God. I got to try to get some point some people to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus is the only one who can save you. Y'all know the song, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Because God saved me. But I made a choice. You know, I, ma I made a choice. And I know that you can't, you're not going to repent. People are not going to repent until they're ready to repent. But it is an urgency for repentance. And like I said, the way these people live in this world... You don't want to die in your sin without repenting. You don't want to die in your sin without being born of the water and of the spirit. Because if you die in your sin without being born again and without being born of the water and of the spirit, it's in the scriptures now. It, it, it tells you, it clearly says, unless a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he will not enter the kingdom of God. It say that. So, you know, we take a lot of stuff for granted. We we take for granted that God is going to wake us up every day. We take for granted uh, you know, all these people dying from COVID. It could it could be it could have been me. It could have been you. I could have died. For I got say God could have let me die in my sin. And I thank him all the time that he didn't let me die in my sin. Cuz before I got saved, if I would have died in my sin, I I wouldn't have inherited the kingdom of God. I would not have. Cuz I was still fornicating. I was I was still doing everything that I wanted to do. I ain't had no real prayer life. I didn't have no relationship with God prior to uh last year. But God, he he came through my life with a bulldozer. And people can think what they want to think about me or say what they want to say. Whatever. What but I'm still gonna do what God called me to do. And I don't care who don't like it or who got something to say or, or what nobody think. Because cause all that matters at the end of the day is what God think about me. Because he said, I am he who searches hearts and who searches minds. And if I feel comfortable in knowing that I'm doing what he tell me to do every day, then that's what I'm going to do. Because I don't play with this. I'm, I'm, I'm God is still molding me and shaping me and working on me. I got my faults. We all fall short of the glory of God. This is not a condemning message. Okay. This is not that. And I'm not being judgmental, but you know, people often think that because you you preach on a certain uh subject or, or topic or whatever, that you condemning them or that you um you judging them. But no, God said I rebuke those whom I love. He said, I reproof those who he loves. In other words, he re he corrects his children. He corrects the ones whom he loves. Just like your children, when they do something that's wrong, and you know it's going to lead them to a path of destruction, what you do? I will hope that you correct them. I will hope them that you tell them right from wrong. I will hope that you lead in them the right way and say, hey, son, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Hey, son, you shouldn't be living like that. Hey, that's that's wrong. Don't do that or whatever it is. That's how God feels about us. Because we are his children. If you say you a child of God and you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you believe in him, you believe and you accepted that he has, has died for us, for our sins, for our iniquities. So he said he, he reproves those whom he loves. So when I see people and I look on my timeline and I see all this sinful stuff and I'm not judging because I can't judge. It's only one judge and that's God. That ain't me. 
But all I can do is just pray for people and intercess on their behalf. That's all I can do. And just keep doing what I'm doing and planting seeds and spreading the gospel. That's all I can do. But I just wanted to share that. But people just have gotten so complacent that when you when you teach something or when you preach something that goes against what they're comfortable with or what they're used to hearing, then they say, oh, you're in your feelings or oh, you're emotional or oh, you crazy. No. It's I know what I know. I know what I study and I know who I am. I know who God is. We got a relationship. We like this. And I know what he tell me to say. And I'm not going to say nothing that is going to contradict the scriptures. That's not what I'm going to do. Because see, I don't, I don't play around with this. Okay. And a false prophet. Yeah, I did get the president, presidency thing. I got that wrong. We already apologized for that or whatever. But I know I'm called. I know I'm chosen. I know I am, I am anointed and I know the word. And when you know who you are in Christ, when you know who you are in Christ and you know your, your purpose and you walking in your purpose, you can be confident and you can be bold, you know, when you study the word of God and you can stand on it and you can be bold. You can be confident when you know what your purpose is, when you know who you are, when you know that you, you are joint L with Christ and you doing what God called you to do. You can be confident. So that's why it's so important. That if you don't know what your purpose is, that you find out what your purpose is. Because we all have a purpose. God didn't just put you here for no reason. We all have a purpose. All of us. So it's important that you know, you know what your purpose is so that you can live a life that's pleasing to God. Not only that, but so that you can do your part. Because we all have a part to play. This life is temporary. This 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 world is is temporary. The things of this world are temporary. They will perish. They're going to perish. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. There will be a new heaven and a new earth, and all of this stuff that you see, it's it's going to pass away. But um yeah, people think they think, um, <clears throat> and, that, and that's just a, a problem that I have with some of these preachers because they only teach, some of them only teach what's comfortable to them. Or they only teach about, uh, you know, God is loving, God is forgiving, um, um, blessings and prosperity and health and wealth and yeah, that's good. God is all of that. Yeah, God is love. You know, God is forgiving. But God also has a wrath. God also has a vengeance. He said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. You know, he like a two and one. He got two sides. Just like most of us got two sides. God got two sides too. He got a loving side. He is love, long suffering. He is um forgiving. Matter of fact, his word said, it is not in my will that any shall perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's in the word. So that's why he is so long suffering. That's why he is so patient. That's why he is so just. Because it's not in his will that any shall perish, but that all should come to repentance and have eternal life. That's why Jesus came to the, to the world in the first place. Not to condemn the world, but to save the world. So salvation is a gift, but you have to do your part. You have to accept Jesus and you have to repent. It's a two-step process. People think that, oh, Jesus already paid the price for, for my sins. Jesus already died for my sins, so I can do whatever I want to do. If you are living like that, let me tell you, that's a lie from the pits of hell. And that thinking right there, that mindset, you will not inherit the kingdom of God like that. Because first of all, he said that you must be born of the water and of the spirit. And you must repent. 
You cannot enter heaven. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God if you have not been born of the water of the spirit and if you have not repented. That I mean, that's in the word. I'm 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 giving you Bible. I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to preach the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's it. I'm not I'm not going to sugarcoat for people. I'm not going to tell people what they're what they want to hear. Because if I do that, I will lead people astray. And that's what a lot of pastors do. They, you know, some of these mega church pastors and, and not even just mega church pastors. They tell people what they want to hear. Or either they only preach love and wealth and prosperity and health and, 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 and all of that good stuff. But that's not the whole gospel. That's not the whole, that's not the whole word. That's only a portion of it. You know, we can't just teach. I can't if 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 I got on here and I just taught, oh heaven, oh giving, oh loving, oh bless. You're gonna be blessed, and you're gonna have all these good things. And I, I probably have a whole bunch of more followers or a whole bunch of more viewers if that's what I if I, if that's what I taught. But because I teach on everything, or try to, or try to be versatile, or try to preach the whole word. It's not as accepted. I ain't gonna have that many viewers, but it's okay because you know the ones who want to hear the truth, they gonna get it. You know, but it is what it is. But we just live in a society where people are so complacent, and they just they just walk around like with their eyes closed, like the blind just leading the blind. And people just think that things are just going to go back to the way that they used to be. Nah, God said not so. Not so. Notice I preach a lot on idol tree. You know, that's why I encourage people to put God first. That's why I encourage people to repent. That's why I encourage people to get a real prayer life and get a real relationship with God. But... I ain't going to be on here alone. I'm about to, matter of fact, I'm about to get off of here. But I just wanted to share those few verses real quick. So y'all have a blessed night.